Smile. Small incision lenticule extraction. To fixate or not fixate the eye during dissection. That is the question. Let's talk about the art of refractive surgery. Hopefully you've watched some of my previous videos where we go in depth into the process of lenticule creation. If not, they are available for reference and I'm sure we'll cover more points regarding lenticule creation in the future. For now, let's skip that and let me show you videos of lenticule dissection and extraction with and without globe fixation. As mentioned in previous videos, the vast majority of smile surgeons fixate the eye during surgery. That is, they establish purchase on the globe near the limbus to keep the eye steady in a relative state of primary position during the second half of the procedure. There are many benefits to this. First, you essentially have control over the globe. This is akin to one's ability to control the eye and to do forced ductions to test motility of the extraocular muscles. If you have control of the eye, you don't have to worry about the patient moving around, belzing, or saccading during the delicate maneuvers of lenticule dissection and extraction. Fixating the eye also allows you to control counter tension while dissecting. Remember, smile is not just a visual procedure, it is tactile as well. The sensation or resistance encountered during dissection is telling and can be used to efficiently or strategically execute the dissection. The main goal of fixating is to safely, efficiently, and effectively conduct the removal of the lenticule to complete the surgery. Fixating the eye can reduce the chances of a cap tear or incision extension taking place, and this is especially true of surgeons who are just learning how to do smile or who have only done a few procedures. Just like when doing forced ductions, topical anesthetic is applied to try to reduce the sensation the patient will feel when grasping the conjunctiva or episclera with forceps. If you're just starting to do smile surgery, I highly recommend fixating the eye. Now, I personally don't fixate the eye when I perform routine smile surgery, and while there are ardent and staunch supporters in the fixation camp, I personally am ambivalent on the supposed controversy and ultimately think the surgeon should do what they are most comfortable with and what will deliver the best outcome for the patient. I will occasionally fixate, especially in the instance of an uncooperative patient or significant cap tear but those instances are rare and fixating is certainly not my default. Here's why. Despite topical application of anesthetic or vasoconstricting agents, there is a non-zero chance that the patient will feel the forceps holding the eye during the surgery, and there is a non-zero chance of inducing an iatrogenic subconjunctival hemorrhage. While these may be viewed as benign, they are certainly cosmetically undesirable and can take weeks to resolve. Additionally, any accidental tearing of the conjunctiva can cause transient postoperative irritation and even dryness from the uneven ocular surface. I have even seen a conjunctival cyst form at the site of where the globe was fixated. I'm sure those who religiously fixate will claim that they don't have any of these issues, and they're probably right. But it's not really the most interesting topic of debate, so I don't try to convert anyone away from fixating for this reason alone and merely offer this point as something to consider. Using one hand to fixate and one hand to dissect means that both hands are at play. However, if you don't fixate the eye, you have an additional hand to steady the dissector, retract the patient's brow or eyelid back even further than the speculum may allow, manipulate the joystick of the laser to bring a patient back into the field of view, or control their head if they are moving. Additionally, if your laser suite is set up so that visitors, staff, consults, other patients or family members can watch the surgery being performed in real time through the windows of the surgical suite, consider what smile surgery looks like to the quote unquote layperson with little knowledge of the procedure. Seeing metal forceps grab the conjunctiva is not the most neutral visual in the world. Sure, as surgeons, we don't think twice about something like this, but think back to medical school. How many of your classmates found eyes gross or were squeamish about eyeballs or anything coming near their own eyes? And these are medical professionals. And now, consider a patient or onlooker who is probably slightly nervous, anxious, and they're seeing an eyeball on high magnification and high resolution get pinched by forceps. Psychologically, it can be jarring, and I've had family members outside of the laser suite almost pass out, and they're not even the ones having the surgery. In this modern era, Refractive surgeries are often recorded on cell phones and then shared with loved ones or played on social media, and a patient's cosmetic outcome is often just as apparent as their subjective satisfaction with the surgery. If someone is super happy after laser vision correction, you can take their word for it that they can see amazingly well, 
but you don't need them to tell you about that splotch of blood on the white of their eye when you look at them. So something as trivial as fixating or not fixating the eye can actually have subtle downstream ramifications for perception, referrals, and refractive surgery at large. We are, of course, straying from the concrete and tangible and now delving into the art of refractive surgery. And finally, let's very quickly talk about the drawbacks of not fixating the eye. Again, if you're just starting to learn smile or have done relatively few cases, you may find that prior to developing efficient and effective non-fixation dissecting technique without the counter tension present with the fixation, you are putting the globe through travel and patients may mention some globe soreness on post-operative day one. Additionally, similar to how the vagal nerve can be stimulated during strabismus surgery and lead to bradycardia, I suspect that a similar response rarely can be caused by lack of fixation with inefficient technique. That being said, we've all had patients who felt faint or woozy after LASIK or PRK, so it's possible that this is just a case-by-case -case instance and often related to a patient's anxiety and nervousness prior to and during surgery. Apart from these rare observations, I find that there is little downside to not fixating the eye during smile surgery. At the end of the day, Please do what you are most comfortable with, go with whatever surgical technique allows you to perform the safest, most efficient, and most effective surgery, because the only goal is to deliver a perfect visual outcome. If you are just learning smile or feel relatively inexperienced, my recommendation is to definitely fixate the eye. However, once you become more and more comfortable, as your technique becomes more refined and your skill level increases, you will likely find yourself able to perform just as efficient and effective a surgery with the aforementioned benefits without fixating. So, what do you think? Do you agree with what I said? Do you prefer to fixate the eye when you perform smile surgery? Comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.